The dose that people use for recreational use of ketamine is 0.5 to 0.8. This means that they are awake and that they are having hallucinations. This is the dose we want to avoid. How's it guys and welcome back. My name is James. This is the Med Guide. Today we're going to be doing ketamine. We're going to be discussing do's and don'ts, pros and cons, and especially the dosages you want to avoid. All right, so ketamine, it is a wonderful drug. It is a powerful drug, but you need to know what you're doing. A lot of people find it quite intimidating. It really isn't that intimidating. So there's multiple vials with different concentrations. You might have a 50 milligram per mole. You might have 100 milligrams per mole. You might even have 10 milligrams per mole. So be careful with which vial you're picking up. Second thing is that if you're giving this drug undiluted and you're giving it quickly, the patient's probably going to stop breathing for a short period of time you can anticipate that sort of thing. Not really a problem when you're doing an RSI, unless they're hypoxic, but that's another entire story for another day. So the dosages, what are the dosages? First of all, there is a 0.1 milligrams per kilogram. That is for pain management. It is not going to put them to sleep. It's not going to disassociate them. It's just going to remove pain. There's a story, I'll tell you about it at the end of the video. Second dose is one milligram per kilogram. That is a sedation dose. They're not deep enough for a disassociation, and that's why you go to two milligrams per kilogram, and that would be your RSI dose. So it's either 0.1 for pain, one for sedation, and two for RSI. Obviously, whichever country you're in or whatever country I'm in, you must do whatever you're supposed to do, but these are dosages that I have found online, and these are dosages that I have used previously, and they have worked very well. So obviously ketamine is a disassociative. It is not an analgesic. So it removes the brain from the body and that is pretty much what it does. It is a really great drug because when you give something like fentanyl or morphine, we drop the patient's sympathetic surge and so they go all calm, chill and relax. It's not really what we're wanting to be doing with trauma patients or patients who are hypovolemic or hypotensive. So what ketamine does is that it stimulates catecholamine release. Saying that, if someone is already at their maximum stimulation of catecholamines, ketamine is not really going to do much. So it's good to know that it does not drop heart rates or blood pressures. In fact, it increases. Sometimes this is good. If they're having an MI, it may not be the right drug of choice. The other really great thing to know about ketamine is that it causes bronchial dilation because catecholamines release adrenaline, adrenaline causes bronchodilation. It all kind of has a knock-on effect. The dose that people use for recreational use of ketamine is 0.5 to 0.8. This means that they are awake and that they are having hallucinations. This is the dose we want to avoid. If you're gonna use 0.1, stay on that side. If you're going to use one, stay on that side. Don't go in between. What happens is that you lose control. They start to be awake and they start to hallucinate you lose control of what they're doing. Sometimes what happens is that they become like a bear. It's kind of a term that I've heard before where they just start to move and do whatever they want. They're conscious, but you have no way of telling them what to do because they can't hear what you're saying. In that case, you just give them more. It's got a very safe drug profile. You can give them a lot, not gonna have any negative effect. The other thing you want to discuss is that they have done trials on ketamine and what kind of mindset people can have and what kind of um, dreams or hallucinations they can have and that they found that if they told the patient to go to their happy place so whether that's like your paradise of place that where you calm at your mind people are less likely to have hallucinations so if you've just had your leg chopped off and you're in massive pain and you get put down with ketamine you're probably going to have some negative hallucinations the other thing to note is that people who do use ketamine as a recreational drug is that they take control of their environment. They might turn off their phones, they might dim down the lights, they might control who's there and what's being spoken about so that they can control their hallucinations better. This is something that we can take to our advantage is that when we are giving someone um, ketamine, we should be aware of the environment that we're in. We should be in control of this environment. If they are in pain and they are very anxious, we can give them something like midazolam or um, a diazepam, which is going to calm them down. It might make them rest, also has retrograde amnesia. And these are ways that we can mitigate these problems. It's not really a problem if you give the right dose. It's also not really a problem if you are very aware of the fact that uh, ketamine can have these effects. And if you are aware of them, you're more able to mitigate. So the story that I want to talk to you about was that I was transporting a seven-year-old kid who had a gunshot in the abdomen. He was borderline hypertensive and in severe pain. 
the only drugs I had was morphine and uh, ketamine. They were not necessarily the right choice to give morphine. The doctor was pretty keen to give morphine. And I said, I think, and from my experience is that uh, abdomen, uh, penetrating abdomen trauma causes hypertension. If you're gonna give them any drugs that drops blood pressure, it's going to drop their blood pressure. I gave them 0.1 milligrams per kilogram of ketamine and the pain was gone. Last of about 15, 20 minutes, he then said, oh, pain's back. And I gave him another 0.1 and the pain went away. It is phenomenal. So guys, hope you did enjoy this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, or queries, please drop them below and we shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.